guys. I'm so excited to finally be self-vlogging. So I'm gonna bring you so much great content all the time because I have my equipment now. What are you doing? Oh, hey Philip, I'm finally self-vlogging. I'm a filmmaker just like you. Look no, at my no, equipment. No, no, stop that, stop that. You no, look, I have the stop phone and the, and the camera. Stop that, what? that's enough, that's enough. Come on. Ah, sit down, here's the light. No. Mm. Okay, guys, so on today's Oh, uh, you, you're what? hopeless. It, it's a disgusting, unflattering angle from below. But I'm in the window. It, yeah, but if you look up, the light hits your eyes and looks really good. So put it up there, and you're all set. I can't look at this anymore. Yeah. Do you have problems self-vlogging, too? Hey, Philip, can I ask you some questions? I guess. Roll the intro. Hey everybody, Coach Jimmy here. I'm here with the Philip Hartshorn. You know his work, but you probably haven't seen him. Actually, Philip is my videographer, <laughs> and everything that we do on this channel, you're behind the camera. Yeah. So we're here in London right now, and we've been shooting some epic stuff, but for the next couple days, Philip's going back home, I'm gonna be by myself, and so I wanted to have you on the channel to give us some tips on what do you do if you're not a trained filmmaker like yourself, but you're trying to shoot yourself. What are some tips? I kind of come at things from an artistic angle, from like a cinematography angle. And the main difference is a lot of people who are filming sort of vloggy stuff, there's just no art to it, there's no science, and it doesn't look very aesthetic. Okay. Um, now the way we get around this is we kind of apply the film side to it. And I'll show you guys a couple tips today, very simple stuff uh, that you can do even with your phone in a dark room. The mentality of no matter what you have to work with, making the best of it. Oh, that's good because right, so. you know, you know, I have uh, you know a camera here and a phone mm -hmm. and a, a few things. But most people that I see that are vlogging, literally, as we've been walking around London, is a lot of this, a lot of this, and so, right. mm -hmm. and you don't always have an external light or an external mic. So there's there's things you can do just with this there to get ways. some quality mm -hmm. work. Okay. Absolutely, there are ways. So uh, yeah, like on my channel, I do a lot of fight scenes, a lot of like movies, you know, films yeah. and stuff. So on that end. It has to be good. Like, it has to be good. It looks, it's jarring to the right. audience. Like something's wrong, or if it's like lit strangely, unless you're trying to be, you know, suspenseful or something, <laughs> right? So you don't want to give off a suspenseful feeling or like a horror vibe <laughs> when you're doing a vlog, right? Yeah, turn people off. So um, yeah, very simple stuff. The way we usually go about it is number one, lighting is usually key. So it's audio visual component, right? Film. Right. And as they say, the eyes are the window to the soul, right? You know, from acting. So you want to make sure there's light hitting your eyes. And if you're seen. Um, the little reflection that happens in someone's eyes mm -hmm. when uh, when light hits it. Like the twinkle? Yep, that little twinkle. If you look for that, make sure that's happening. It's a pretty good indicator uh, or a good test to know it's going to be good. So um, like one of the first setups, obviously, I had my back to the window behind us. Right. Better tip is if I don't have any other light and I'm in a hotel room and I'm vlogging, I right. need to face outside towards the window to get that light on my face. Right, and the reason for that, and you know, we're actually just starting here. We're going to show off in a second how to change it. So, and the reason that happens is because why you don't want a window behind you is a lot of our phones, they have an auto ISO or auto exposure to like use layman's terms. So what they do is they're actually picking up the light behind you, this bright window, and thinking they're exposing the camera to that. Okay. So what happens is your face gets super dark. You want to expose it to your face. So the cameras really aren't smart enough to do that on your phone, usually. Sometimes they are on the new ones. But the way to go around that is just make sure you're facing the window so you are the focal point for the camera to focus on. So it's kind of a tip that I don't hear a lot, is um, working around the auto settings of the camera. So that's one, okay. especially for phones. Um, we can demonstrate this too. So the example earlier is, yes, the room is lit, but the light is behind me. So all I need to do, according to Philip, is turn this way. Yeah, look how nice those blue Whoa! eyes look. Crazy, right? So that's one, that's one good tip right there. Um, and you instantly see it, it's something you can pick up on. So always try to think about that. Um, another one is angles, as I joked in the little uh, skit in the beginning. Right. Um, when you go down, you tend to get these kind of weird angles. You're looking down, again, film, Nobody likes film. the extra chin look here. Right. No, no. matter how fit you are. <laughs> yeah. That's like when your your phone opens in selfie mode, and you're like, oh! Right. And film is all science. So what is this telling people? It's like, I'm a we're domineering, kind of looking down on your right. subjects or something. It's, it's not a nice feeling. So this... It's it, this uh, the high is also okay. It Would also you like gives it here? Uh, yeah the high is good. Um, it depends on where the light is, right? So if you had a higher window, you could always do that. Sure. Um, and this is also kind of inviting. It's like hey, it's a, it's a nice uh, happy angle again. If the audience is above you, they don't feel threatened. They don't okay. feel kind of like put off. And so anything in this range and low there too, um, I like. Because this is good. very conversational. Like you would have a conversation with somebody, you're not looking down yeah. at them. 
Uh, Precisely. And it's now, just uh, right we can try and explain this in here. So a good uh, two rules I'll give you guys, very kind of basic level so you can understand in film is number one, the rule of thirds. Okay. Okay, so this is all about aesthetics. Now, if you notice, there's actually a grid and I can overlay a grid over the over the film okay. right here. I see um, that here. So if I right, put myself notice, in that grid. Right. There. So there are three thirds here. This being the first one, this being the second one, this being the third one. So if you place the subject on this grid right here, Okay. You'll notice uh, it looks very aesthetic. And then say you were outside vlogging something like what we were at today, Buckingham Palace. Right. Gorgeous. You would want to place yourself on that third and then have the palace over here. So gotcha. I'm, I'm the palace. Right? And sure. we can even demonstrate some shots I took of the palace. Okay. Um, and then as opposed to just kind of like, hey, I'm here at Buckingham. It's all janky. You can't right. really see it. Again, stuff. you have right. the bad angle. Right. And look it's, at this. See, this is, we're in front of amazing lighting right now. Yeah. And even now you can't see your eyes well. No. So even, because we're back here. Right? Yeah. So. And the eyes are the window to the soul. Especially also vlogging. You're trying to share some light, somebody, your, a piece of your life with yeah. someone. And you want to create that know, like, and trust connection. Totally. And so for me, you know, with acting background, I've always learned that I need to look at that camera like it's my best friend that I'm talking to one person to make eye contact, not with myself on the screen. Yeah. We all like to look at ourselves, but literally <laughs> right there in that camera like I'm talking to a friend of mine. Totally. Also helps a lot, again, that sort of inviting uh, feeling, like eye contact, we sit. Um, so that's another one is the rule of thirds. Always try to think about that. All right, so for the next part, uh, Jimmy, you had another question, right? Yes, so I'm going to Scotland for the next couple of days and I have my phone and I have another external camera. So my question is, what can I do to maximize having two cameras when I'm by myself? Right, so this goes into film theory again. The coolest thing is uh, you want to use, utilize the idea of a wide shot okay. or sort of an establishing shot that shows the entire scene. And then the idea of a closer shot that can kind of bring more human connection, a little bit more drama to it, whatever you're going for. So in a situation like this, this, uh, again, the phone. Which we have kind right. of here. Hey, yeah, yeah. so what, what we like to do is phones tend to be quite wide and you can always zoom in, right. but they're wide so you know you can do selfies and stuff. So what I would do is I would place the one I have in my hand here somewhere back here. If Jimmy was sitting okay, in that so chair. If I was sitting in this chair, right. that's going to be your wide shot mm -hmm. and this is going to be what I'm speaking to and right. therefore I have those two angles. Correct? Right, and this is cool and it kind of, you could put it here. You can put it over here, so it kind of showcases the room more. You got the you got the champagne right here, very nice, very nice. Um, and or you can put uh, this one as well on the windowsill for even more uh, maximized oh, right. light. So we have the lighting here, right? And it's and kind of eye level too. Wide, your wide shot here, right? So you can Could do the wide even shot put here. Something here, I've seen that done before, also where you have one absolutely you're talking to, and the other is kind of a three quarter shot. Yeah, totally. This could even go okay right over here. So you have that nice wide angle. It kind of gives you a little more right. So if I'm establishing telling a story, feel. because that allows you to edit and cut between this camera and this camera and kind of change up. Precisely. What we see. And another vlogging trick that's kind of cool is you could even set this phone. Like, say you were going to talk to that camera. Yeah. So I'm talking here. Uh, and there's like a nice Scottish castle behind you or something. You could even uh, set this phone down like on the ground somewhere. Right. So it's just this cool kind of vista shot of so the castle a, it's, of everything. It's a shot that I'm not even in. Oh no, you'll be in it. But you could even like say you're going to talk to it. Just have it on the ground kind of far away so you see your full body oh. with the set behind you. That's and great. then you could actually cut back and forth. And just that alone, having a cut, the option to cut back and forth gives just such a different feel to it. Sort of a professional cinematic feel to it. That's great. And if you notice a lot of stuff I do for you, B-roll gets cut in and stuff like that. And that's it's just to keep the people interested. Again, it's our Instagram society attention span is like three seconds. So you right. want to keep people excited, right? All right, so again, just a couple tips without getting too deep into it. Okay, so last tip. You, you mentioned B-roll. Ah, yes. And so let's say I'm done talking to the camera. I've made my point. Mm -hmm. But what you do so well for me, because when, when I get the finished edit back, <laughs> I, it's almost like a, a kid at Christmas because it's all these cutaways that I don't even know that, that Philip shot. And so we consider that B-roll, extra shots yeah. that are away, establishing en enhancing. shots. Enhancing. Enhancing, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. So let's say, what are some tips on capturing B-roll? So if I'm doing a tutorial or a vlog, but I want some cutaway shots, right. what are some, some simple tips? Cool, cool. So a perfect example is uh, Buckingham or Kensington Palace. I'll show the footage we got on this yeah. trip. Um, I got shots of Jimmy as he's talking. And again, it's a pretty, pretty standard shot. It's either uh, with this so you can see his head in the frame or with the wider angle of the full palace behind him. So what we're doing is we're talking about sort of the, the royalty or the majesty of the palace. And you talked about the queen and everything, a cool right, point, yeah. watch, watch this video. But yeah, so what I was doing is, okay, as I'm listening, I'm constantly editing in my head and say, what, what would I want right here? While he's saying, you know, the queen could be here. It's, uh, oh, let's show the flag, which actually shows that the queen is there, okay. as we were told earlier today. 
Um, if the flag is flying, the queen is in residence at the palace. So, okay, I got a couple shots of the flag. Okay. Um, you also talked about sort of the grandeur. Okay, let me show off some of the, the art the intricacy. So I got some close-ups of the gate, the beautiful design and the bronze work. Um, we got a shot of the uh, the obelisk with the uh, the lions right. and all, all so these statues and everything. So sometimes it's easier to get the B-roll after because you know what you talked about. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. and so you're just like, oh, be... I reference these things. Mm -hmm. Plus, I, I love the fact that there's usually some kind of establishing shot, right? Yep, like, very important. You mm -hmm. set the scene. Now, sometimes you can start a vlog and the first thing they see is you. Right. But sometimes it's also nice to set yeah. like uh, a setting like the, they do in a movie. The best, I was gonna say, the best way to do this is uh, just start to think more filmically next time you watch a movie or watch your favorite movie. Analyze it a little bit. Okay, how did they start my favorite scene? Did they start, uh, again, you can kind of start with less information for the audience. If I start in a close up of Jimmy's face and he looks upset, say, okay, less information for the audience, right? He looks he looks very upset. What's going on here? I need more answers. Right. It's asking a question. Why is he upset? Uh, if we start with a wide shot and you see Jimmy looks upset and I'm dead with a knife in my chest, <laughs> it's like, okay. Something happened. Either he killed Philip because uh, he screwed up a film job or, you know, maybe he discovered him and he's upset. So again, it's it's conveying information to the audience. How do you want to do that? What mood do you want to set? And these are the things uh, by kind of watching your favorite movies, you'll see the director's choice. Why did he show Jimmy's face first or the or the wide shot? So if you notice when we were leaving Buckingham today, yeah. I said, oh, what am I doing? Like I need the full shot of the the whole yeah, you hadn't got the And movie. I was like, let, let me walk back for a second. I got, because we had, you know, in front of the gate, yeah. um, but I got that grand shot. So we can use probably near the beginning when he says, we're here at Buckingham Palace. Boom, right. the grand shot. So for that, I don't want to confuse the audience. Okay. I want them to see Buckingham. <laughs> yeah. And these are all great because you can yeah. take any one of these and you don't have to be an expert filmmaker like Philip, no. but no. this is what's gonna set you apart when filming your own vlogs, besides those people that just yes. are doing this and nothing else with bad lighting. Yeah. So Philip, as always, we always do epic work together. I'm glad yeah. my audience can finally meet you. Hello. How do they find you? <laughs> uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, that's my biggest platform. And we do everything from martial arts to art and filmmaking and everything. And that's just my name or the Philip, and I'm sure he's linked it below. Yeah, we got it down below, and we'll take Come care of that. Come say hi. Up. Yeah, and of course the same on Twitch and Instagram. Come say hello. Absolutely. Any so questions make... you have, by the way, put it in the comments on Jimmy's video or come ask me. I'm always, always glad to help. Very interactive in the comments. That's one thing I've learned from him as well. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and share this. Make sure to subscribe to Philip's channel as well, and we'll talk to you next time. All right, thanks, guys.